Hello, am I audible? Manish, Chaitanya, Archie, anybody there? Yes, Suru, sir, we can hear you. Okay, you will be starting the session with the uh, marketing yes. PPT, right? Yes, yes, the intro. We are okay. waiting for the other participants. No, you're still the participants are joining, so we'll wait for them and we'll start. Okay. Yes or no, we can hear you. OK. OK, we'll start session by uh, 410 or 415. OK, so no. Yeah, sure. We are expected uh, 200 plus part uh, to uh, 300 plus participants. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, some are uh, joining our previous session, uh, mm -hmm. so I'm going there also. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, guys, a uh, very good evening to all. Uh, as you have noticed that some of the people are into uh, yesterday's life, so we are making them understand that they have to join this live. Uh, till the time, we will be waiting for the participants to get in here. Also, my team will be sharing the links related to the social media platforms. And also we have meetup communities. On which we do update and announce the upcoming webinars, workshops and obviously the uh, events. So you all can go and get the links in the Q&A section. If you uh, if you are willing to follow us and if you feel like uh, you need to follow us on our social media platforms to get the updates on daily basis, you just can go and the check uh, check the links in the uh, Q&A section. Also, we will be providing AI one uh, AI 050 learning achievement batch. So this topic on exploring generative AI is related to that batch. So AI 050 is the batch will be provided to you all. I will explain you all what you have to do to get this batch activated in a while. Uh, till the time, please go and uh, get the social media links. Follow us over there.
Uh, I request participants to be there with us. We'll be starting the webinar in few minutes. Uh, if you have any doubt questions related to the yesterday's web webinar, uh, which was on artificial intelligence, the introduction to artificial intelligence, then you can post your questions and queries in the chat box. My team is there to help you out with the same. Those who have connected just now, please note we are expecting few more participants to join this live. Uh, we will be starting in few minutes. Till the time, uh, my team has shared the links related to the social media platforms and communities on which we do update the relevant upcoming events and webinars. So you all can go and follow us over there. Also, participants are requested to note that we will be providing you all complimentary batch on AI 050, which is related to today's topic. So you just have to get this, get that batch activated. You will get the study material related to the topic in that batch. I will explain you further in this webinar how to get that batch activated and how you can share that batch on your profile, like on your LinkedIn profile and other profile as well. So stay tuned till then.
Okay, so we'll start the webinar now. Hello and welcome you all. Uh, Chaitali, this side. I will be your host for this webinar. Uh, we are into day two of the generative AI series. And we are going to uh, do talk about talk more about the exploring generative AI. As you can see, today's topic is on exploring generative AI. Uh, please note uh, me, my team and also our speaker will be there to guide you throughout this webinar. So if you have any question, doubts related to the topic or any other questions uh, related to the trainings, you can ask in the Q&A section. We are there to help you out. Uh, then moving ahead and talking about uh, today's event uh, sponsor. Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate uh, learning solution company. Synergetics uh, do believe in delivering trainings to solve customer pain points uh, by crafting cutting edge learning solutions. Uh, we do provide trainings on solutions like persona based onboarding solution. Then we have onboarding add on solution certification solution then we have certification add-on solution reskilling solution emerging technology training solution certification hackathon solution then we have cloud adoption solution latest technology training solution sales pre-sales training solution and uh, practice playbook and architecting solutions Now, how our training will help you? Uh, so it will give you an complete learning experience. You will get trained, uh, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. Uh, that is to get recognized. Then this is the skilling journey. Uh, we have three types of trainings. Uh, let's say we have a basic which is on fundamental certifications. Then we have advanced role based certification and the last uh, and the third uh, level of certification that is expert level certification. In fundamental certification, we do provide trainings on AZ 900 uh, as your fundamental. Then we have AI 900 as your AI fundamental. Then we have DP 900 as your data fundamental. Uh, power platform fundamental which is PL 900 and SC 900 security compliance and identity fundamental. Then talking about the second level of the certifications, uh, we do provide training on AZ 104, AZ 204, AI 102, then we have DP 203 and of course PL series and uh, security SC series. Then the expert level training. Which is on AZ 305, SC 100, PL 600 and AZ 400. So if you need to know more or if you are interested to get more information related to the certification training, uh, you all can connect with us. The ID, uh, the email ID will be mentioned in the chat box for you all. You all can go and connect with us over there. My support team is there to help you out with all the questions and queries related to the training, certification training, the exam vouchers related to it. Then the certification benefits. Uh, our certification helps to increase the visibility and we do provide uh, add on uh, certification uh, modules like short duration modules and more. Then talking about the uh, training which is organized and handled by the A ATC community as your tech community. Under this community, uh, we have multiple communities like Emerging Technology Community for All, 
Then we have Azure Tech Community specifically for Pune Curse. Then we have Azure Tech Community Surat. And Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Curse. The community links will be mentioned in the chat box for you all. So you all can go and follow us over there. Uh, to follow this community, you just simply have to install the Meetup app on, on, on your device or on your phone. And you can go on the links to follow these communities. Uh, we do updates the relevant upcoming uh, workshop, webinars, event on these communities. Then the code of conduct, please note no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation while speaker is presenting his her screen. Also, you, uh, you are not allowed to take the screen recording. As it, it, it is not a. Uh, not a it, as it is not a common sense and etiquettes related to our privacy, so please make sure that you don't uh, restrict that. Also note uh, the achievement batch which we are talking about AI 050 will conduct all the concepts and topic related to today's webinar. So you all can go and uh, revise through that achievement batch. Then we have Mr. Sonu Satyadas with us today. Uh, he is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as a practice head. Uh, he has 12 plus years of experience in training and development uh, in various Microsoft and open source technologies. Then the agenda of this webinar. Uh, will explore more about generative AI techniques and their applications. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, today, uh, the topic and the concepts are more related to AI 050 certification. Please note we are providing a complimentary learning achievement batch. Which includes study material like an overview of the modules. Then the topic which are related to this webinar. Uh, you can also share this batch on your LinkedIn, Twitter and other profiles. Uh, to get this batch activated, you just have to follow certain uh, steps. Uh, as you can see on the screen, you have to follow certain steps and get the batch activated. I will uh, showcase the redemption process in break time. When we'll get a break time, we'll explain you all how to get this batch activated, how you can share this batch on your LinkedIn and other profiles. Then two more webinars are there in gen generative AI series, which is on 21st and 22nd of December. That is tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Uh, the topic will be covered under uh, under this uh, two of the webinars will be practical application of generative AI in business and second and the last topic will be generative AI with Azure open AI service and beyond. Uh, so the uh, registration link related to this topic will be mentioned in the chat box. Uh, if you are interested and you, you feel like you need to register for the same, you, you all can go and register yourself over there. Also, please make sure you follow us on our social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and uh, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we do provide the upcoming webinars, workshop details on the social media platform. So make sure you follow us over there. Uh, thank you so much guys for graciously listening to me. Uh, now I would like to pass the mic to our speaker, Mr. Sonu. Uh, let's eagerly welcome him to share his insight and expertise in this topic. Uh, thank you once again for your kind attention. Over to you, Sonu, sir. OK, thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope the screen is visible. 
to all of you. Today, we are going to talk about the generative AI, the methods, techniques, and the applications of generative AI. Myself, Sonu Satyadas, I am the practice head and assistant manager for the technology. I am into this uh, training and development from last 15 years, mostly working with uh, cloud and AI related technologies, open source and container technologies. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. I have completed my certifications on Azure administration, architecting, Azure development, and AI engineering. In today's session, we are primarily talking about generative AI. What is generative AI? What are the different uh, generative AI methods and models available? And we will be primarily talking about the open AI concepts, the different uh, open AI models available, and uh, their use cases. And finally, we'll be ending up the session with the ethical AI development concepts. Starting with the generative AI. We know the artificial intelligence is one of the most trending and popular technology nowadays. Organizations are implementing the AI technologies in their applications and services. Artificial intelligence is a kind of uh, tool or a service or a software you can say that is mimicking the human capabilities we know humans can read interpret the text they can draw the images they can imagine and then draw the uh, pictures they can speak in different tones they can speak different languages. They can convert from one language to another language. That means a human can do lots of things which now can be done with the help of applications. We use artificial intelligence models or service to mimic this human capabilities. And we can use these functionalities in our applications and services or devices. These artificial intelligence capabilities, we may use specific to an environment or specific to a device, or we will make it public for all kind of uh, use cases. So the AI concepts or AI, we can categorize into three, and they are ANI, AGI, and ASI. Artificial narrow intelligence is a kind of artificial intelligence technology or is a category of artificial intelligence technology which in which we use the artificial intelligence for performing specific tasks and that will be implemented in specific applications or services or devices something like uh, amazon alexa or cortana or the tools or devices that is used for uh performing our day-to-day -day activities like uh, email completions or maybe you you know that now there are devices available who can clean our rooms 
it's a kind of artificial intelligence implementation so if you go and ask that device to write a novel or to sing a song it cannot do that because that device is designed to perform a specific task so we are using the artificial intelligence on specific areas for specific purposes and we call it as narrow intelligence artificial narrow intelligence an artificial general intelligence is the common artificial intelligence methods and practices that we use nowadays which can mimic the human capabilities an artificial super intelligence is a kind of uh, ai which surpass the human capabilities so that is yet to implement or yet to discover so you can see that in hollywood movies that uh, robots can uh, do lots of things like humans and something beyond humans and that is the conceptual intelligence we can say it is the artificial super intelligence the artificial narrow intelligence is typically used in lower scenarios or in limited uh, use cases where smart writing feature that you see in your email applications where you can tell the application to write a mail or when you write the mail it will be giving the completions like maybe it is providing the subject or it is uh, adding the signatures or it is uh, correcting the grammars so a lot lot of things now the email client applications are doing and they are using this ai for language translations or completing the text so we can categorize that as a as an example of a in i another example we can say is a spam message classifier now you can see in gmail or outlook you will get hundreds of mails in a day some of them will be official mails some of them will be personal mails and lots of and major part of those mails will be some uh, promotional mails or bulk messages you can say and the email client applications are smart enough to understand and block those spam mails or we or they will simply categorize those mails as personal mails official mails or promotional mails so if it is a promotional email it will be put into a specific category or a folder that is an example of artificial narrow intelligence how it is going to do that it will evaluate the mail contents identify different parameters and based on that it takes a decision whether it is a promotional mail or spam mail or personal mail or official you can also see the voice assistant applications like a uh, alexa or cortana is also using the ai capabilities so you can tell the alexa device play a song or switch on the tv or turn on the light right so lots of ai implemented devices are now coming like a uh, driverless cars ai enabled the uh, door locks ai enabled the uh, devices that can be used for our uh, uh, cleaning activities right so that means 
we are using ai but in a uh, limited scope so and we can call it as artificial narrow intelligence but what is this generative ai <clears throat> generative ai is a subset of artificial intelligence or it you can say it's a new term or new concept in the artificial intelligence field and artificial intelligence uh, maybe people thinking that artificial intelligence is a new concept which introduced maybe maximum 20 years back but not artificial intelligence is introduced or this concept has introduced very long back in 1950s in 1956 or 57 the word artificial intelligence is first introduced and after that people start building softwares or applications that can automate the things but yes if you see the emergence of modern artificial intelligence uh, models and devices came in last uh, 10 15 years if you see amazon alexa cortana siri or that kind of applications devices that is integrated with the ai all came in last 10 15 years but yes because of the the uh, machine learning and deep learning technologies if you ask these machine learning and deep, deep learning technologies are also not new but yes they got the importance uh, because of the cloud because the people start building the machine learning models they start uh, creating the creating and uh, uh, building the machine learning models with the cloud services because the limitation for building the machine learning models was the requirement of compute and storage so they need large compute and storage for the data and the execution but with the emergence of cloud they are able to use large compute devices and uh, bulk volume of data storages available in cloud because of these the machine learning technologies also start uh, means uh, they they got the prominence and they start people start using those ai uh, tools and technologies and that's the reason now you can see there is lots of improvements in the ai field and finally we are into generative ai so what is the difference between the traditional ai models and the generative ai models if you ask artificial intelligence models are typically uh, machine learning models that is designed to perform a specific task yes they can think they can predict and they can also sometimes produce results but on a specific domain or a specific use case but generative ai as the name indicates it can generate new contents fresh contents based on the user request so if the user is asking can you write a story for me then yes it's going to write a story for you and it will be a completely new story and if you ask the model to write a poem the model is going to write a poem for you you can also tell the model 
to do a lot of things like uh, creating articles, blogs, question and answers, presentations, images, diagrams, and other visualizations. So that means the model is now capable to create text contents, images, videos, audio, and so on. All are newly created fresh contents. Means it completely generate new things. So that's why this is called generative AI. Generative AIs are machines that can create new and original content like text, code, images, and music. Unlike the traditional AI models, which is designed for a specific purpose and trained with a specific set of data, they are used to generate or automate a certain activities or certain information. These generative AI models are driven by deep learning algorithms that is trained with a massive amount of data. So deep learning machine learning or deep learning models is a, you can say it's a subset of machine learning model or is a category of machine learning which uses the neural networks to generate things and that is going to that is going to be trained with millions or trillions of uh, data it may be a image data or a text data or audio data or visual data because it is trained with a large set of data they can produce new contents based on the trained data. It's not just uh, recreating the data which is trained. Instead of that, it is generating a new data based on the knowledge. Like as a artist, you will be learning. Suppose if you are learning drawing, at the time of learning the drawing, you will be learning how to draw cats how to draw dogs how to draw elephant or how to draw flowers and so on but once you have completed your training and you, when you become an artist you can imagine things and draw the pictures of dogs cats flowers birds or their combination Yes, during the training, you are just learning how to draw the cat, how to draw the dog, but they, but you don't know or you, you didn't learn how a dog is playing with a cat. But once you have completed your training, you are now able to go and imagine and draw a picture of a dog is playing with a cat. It's a completely new content that you are generating from your imagination because you know how a cat looks like, how a dog looks like. And based on that information, you are generating a picture of dog and cat playing together. Right. So that is what the AI is also going to do. Generative AI is also going to do. During the training, we use the images of dogs, cats, elephants, flowers, birds, and so on. And later we can tell, draw an image of a bird uh, drinking honey from the flower, or maybe a cat sitting on top of elephant. So it will be able to go and draw because it know what is an elephant, what is a dog, what is a bird. So where we are using this kind of AI models, generative AI models, we use it for image generations, which means we can create realistic images for various domains. 
like if you are a marketing guy and you want to create a logo or you want to design a background for the uh, what wallpaper you can tell the model to design it and you can also tell the model what kind of image you want whether it is a cartoon image or a realistic image or a cinematic image or abstract image so based on your instruction it can go and generate the content you can use the generative ai models for generating the text contents like if i'm a trainer and i want to create a set of questions so suppose tomorrow i have to conduct a session for the session i want to generate or i want to use 20 question and answer pairs and i don't have time to go and create this manually i can tell the model that i want 20 questions and answers on this particular topic and the model is able to go and generate those questions and answers for you or if you are or maybe your kid is participating in a competition at school and she is coming and telling you that i want to present a story or a poem in the competition so usually what we do we write the story or poem for them now you can tell the ai model create a story or poem for the kid and you can also tell the model what can be the story content so story about a monkey or a story about a uh, about the friendship or story about the uh, birds and the model is capable to write that story for you you can also use the generative ai in music and audio generation now you just need to tell the ai model to create a background score for the movie scene and you can just explain what is the background or you can give the video input and based on that it can go and generate the background score or you want to create a theme music for some event or some characters you can do that or you want to use the ai to 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 uh, provide audio for the animation characters you can do that so nowadays what is happening the movie actors are supposed to give or supposed to dub for the animation characters but now it's not required you can say okay we have a superhero character and we can write the complete script and give the script to the ai and say that okay this superhero is going to talk like rajini kant and generate the complete audio content for that so its superhero is going to talk like rajini kant the entire script and you can use that audio in that uh, animation character so all this is now possible with generative ai if you see this generative ai models are created using different uh, gener uh, different uh, machine learning or deep learning models and there are different uh, deep learning models or methods we use and i just want to highlight some of them here like a uh, generative adversarial networks that is gan which uses two neural networks one is the generator and the other one is the discriminator and it is used to generate highly realistic outputs and variational autoencoders is also going to 
generate some uh, probabilistic data into a latent space and the encoder is going to sorry decoder is going to generate the results based on the data available in the latent space and the transformers are typically used in the text based models which evaluate the text sequence to sequence and it is primarily used for text generation like gpt is a transformer based model which evaluates the prompt that we are providing and then generate the responses based on the content so it can be a very lengthy prompt also lengthy lengthy text also diffusion models are typically used to generate the images or audios from a low quality input like you must have seen that we can now recreate the images distorted images or uh, <clears throat> fainted images we can now restore and make it um, create high quality images from that or the old movies their display, display quality is low and now we can recreate those things with a 4k quality and that we can do with the help of diffusion models the generative adversarial networks is a kind of deep learning model which primarily contains two neural networks one is a generator and the other one is the discriminator the generator neural network is trying to generate realistic data from the query or from the input and the discriminator is trying to distinguish between the real and the fake data that because we have trained the model or we have trained the model with millions of data sets and when we ask this to create a thing it generates an input or it generates a uh, data and the discriminator is responsible to identify whether it is a real newly generated content or it's a fake data GAN has many interesting applications such as generating new photographs, cartoons, and even 3D objects. Because it is used to generate new objects based on the descriptions that we are providing. And based on the trained data, it will evaluate. So maybe we have trained the model with a lots of cat images maybe a cat with a long tail a cat with a, a red eye cat with a blue eye cat with a, a long hairs cat with a short hairs or a cat with a uh, a good height like that but when we ask the model to create a cat image what it is going to do it will use the information that it has learned and create an image of a cat the encoder is or the generator is responsible for doing that generator is creating that and the discriminator is responsible to identify that whether it is a real or it's a fake data they also can be used for image to image translation and text to image translation means image to image translation means from one image i want to create a variation of that image maybe a, i can say a bird is catching the fish so i can generate an image of a bird with catching the fish and i can tell Okay, this is my input image. 
I want some variations of this, maybe from the front view or back view or maybe side view. So you can create different variations of this image or maybe uh, create a different style image from that. From a real image, real photographic image, I can create a painting image. I think you must have seen in uh, uh, mo seen recently there are mobile applications that can convert your image, the, photo, the real photo image into some kind of cartoon image or painting images. So all these done with the help of GAN models. And this is the architecture of the GAN model where we have a generative network and a discriminative network. The generative network is going to generate new images and there are real image which is used for sampling and the discriminator is responsible to identify whether it is a real image or it's a fake image means it's a newly generated image or it's an image which is taken from the sample so the applications of gan if you see it's uh, used to generate the photographs of human faces like we can tell the model to uh, create some human faces so it generates some human faces but those humans are not existing in the world but yes it, it, it is able to create human faces based on the data it has generate realistic photographs yes i can tell the model to draw an image of a uh, uh, what say see uh, where a ship is riding so it has it, it can go and create the image of the ship in the sea and it looks like a real image real photograph so you can generate such realistic images using gan you can also generate the cartoon characters image to image translations i have already said you can generate uh, variations of images or from a photographic image you can convert that into a cartoon image or painting image uh, by using the can models text to image which means you can give a text description from that text text description it, it will be able to generate an image and uh, face aging that is also recently uh, became very popular some mobile application that helps you to uh, show how you looks like after 50 years or after 20 years so you can adjust the number of years and it will show you how you looks like after 20 years or after 30 years or what is your uh, childhood photo so you can upload your photo and you can say what or how i would look like uh, when i was 10 so the application will create or it will convert those image into a child image with age 10 so those aging uh, face aging applications are created with GAN models. Variational autoencoders is also a type of generative model in the machine learning that is designed to learn efficient representations of complex data and it contains an encoder and decoder. The encoder takes input data and maps it to a probability distribution in the lower dimensional latent space and introduces randomness during encoding, producing not just a single point, but range of possible representations. So whatever 
input you are providing it is converting that into a probability distribution and putting into a latent space with the different variations as i have mentioned if you are giving an image of a cat and it will interpret the cat image into different of styles and then uh, putting that probabilistic values into a latent space and the decoder takes the samples from the latent space and reconstruct the input data and that means whenever we say okay i want to create an image of cat it uh, uses the latent space information that same uh, sample data and then reconstruct the image of a cat it's aimed to faithfully recreate the original data allowing for the generation of new and realistic samples so you can use this for regenerating the original data from the input or from the sample or you can create completely new content and you can also generate realistic sample data using this variational auto encoders and this is how it is you have a value x which is now encoded with the probabilistic encoder and it is putting those uh, probabilistic uh, distribution values into a latent space vector and this decoder is going to take those values and regenerating or reconstructing the x value so we can say it is x dash and the x is equal to x dash or it will be a variation of that x what are the applications of variational auto encoders it's for it's for generating the realistic images of faces that is uh, uh, vae can learn the features of many faces and then create new different looking faces that still feel like a real people means for training purpose we upload different images of human faces and it will identify the features of those faces different faces uh, features it will identify and then later it will reconstruct a new face by using the features that it has learned composing the music by analyzing songs vas can generate new pieces of similar styles of instruments but with the unique melodies and rhythms so it will be able to understand the uh, sound of different instruments and by using uh, different melodies it can create the music using or by combining those instruments so it is understanding how the instrument uh, sound or how the instrument's voice or sound is uh, looks like and it will learn that and then generate the music or melodies or rhythms uh, using those instruments that means we can say okay the model we are giving the guitars uh, input data and it will learn how a guitar sound looks like and then later when i say okay compose a music and play it with a guitar so it is going to play that music with the guitar sound so you don't need to provide the guitar but it is now aware how the guitar music guitar sound looks like so it's go and play with that we can use it for text summarization that is variational auto encoders can understand the main points of the lengthy document so we are providing a very lengthy document and this auto encoders can go and understand the key points of those documents and then we can ask them to summarize it we can create uh, a shorter description about that lengthy content or summarize that text by extracting those key informations from the lengthy text
transformation model which is uh, introduced uh, in a paper attention is all you need by waswani in 2017 and this is one of the most commonly used model for natural language processing so wherever uh, language processing models are created the transformer architecture or transformer model is used as the fundamental model because yes there could be variations but the foundational model or fundamental model will be transformer architecture because it is processing sequential data such as sentences or time series data it could be any length maybe a shorter one or the lengthier one it is capable for processing the sequential data uh, like a sentences or time series data and the key innovation of this transformation model is it's not relying on the recurrent neural networks or convolutional neural network that is cnn because these models that is recurrent neural networks or cnns are not uh, uh, suitable for long range dependencies means if the prompt or if the input text is very lengthy then these models are not suitable to evaluate that but the transformer model is composed of encoder and decoder and the encoder process the input sequence and generate the sequence of feature vectors while the de decoder generates the output sequence from the feature vectors generated by the encoder so the encoder is going to read the input text or prompt sequentially and applying the weight for the tokens which it generates and putting these values into a vector and this decoder is going to use this vector to generate the response content. So this is how it works. As you can see, there is a concept called the positional encoding, which you can see in the uh, encoding and also in the decoding process. And you can see there is a feed forward mechanism that is coming after the multi head attention and normalization. So, for after every multi head attention, you can also see a feed forward. So, let's understand what is it? What is this attention mechanism? The transformer relies on a self attention mechanism which allows the model to weight the uh, importance of different parts of the input sequence when processing each element that means it uh, read the text content and it will assign the weight for the uh, uh, contents or different parts of the input content and it will assign different uh, weight that means the priority is assigned and this priority is helps to identify or helps to uh, uh, helps the decoder to identify what is the importance of this uh, text or in which sequence they need to be ordered the mechanism enables the model to consider contextual information from the entire input sequence simultaneously so even it is a very lengthy text so what is the contextual information from that particular text that can be identified using this because what are the key uh, words or key uh, sentences it will be extracting those informations putting weight for that means priority for that and then it will be used to generate the contextual information the encoder decoder architecture the encoder process the input sequence and the decoder generates the output sequence means whenever we provide an input text the attention mechanism is generating 
the sequence of tokens with the pro priority or weight and that is processed by the encoder and the decoder is generating the output sequence or response each encoder and decoder layers consist of multiple self attention and feed forward sub layers as you see here each encoder and decoder contains multiple layers of attention as well as feed forward mechanism self attention is another concept what is self attention it allows the models to focus on different parts of the input sequence while processing each element capturing long range dependencies more effectively compared to the traditional recurrent and convolutional models that means compared to those models it is capable to go and uh, capture long range dependencies so uh, for example if you are giving a prompt uh saying that i want to write a story uh about the monkey and the elephant but uh the story should end with a tragic uh, uh scene or something like that you can say so if the prompt is very lengthy those traditional models may not be able to go and identify the context of this prompt so it is saying uh, we are saying that okay we have to write a story of monkey and elephant and the other end we are saying it should end with a tragic scene so yes if you use the traditional models it may be able to go and write the story of a monkey and elephant but it may not be a tragic one but if you are writing a tragic story but it may not be a story of monkey or elephant because it it is not able to go and process the very lengthy prompt so when it identifies one uh, uh, one end prompt the other dependencies it may lose but in case of transformer model whatever is the prompt length it is able to identify the contextual information by capturing those long long range dependencies and they will build the uh, context information to generate the response positional encoding since the transformer process input sentences in parallel it lacks inherent information about the order of elements in the sequence Posi positional encoding is added to provide the model with the information about the positions of elements in the sequence as we said it is going to extract the key informations and and generating the context from different positions in a long range or in a large text it needs to extract the key informations and generating the context but while creating those or while processing those large or long range dependencies it may lose the order so which is the first statement which is the second one which is the third one so it may lose the order of uh, elements in that sequence so to avoid that it use a positional numbering or positional uh, uh, value so the positional encoding is added to each element in that in that sequence so that it will be able to go and it's just like a numbering you can assume so that it will be able to identify the positional values the sequence or order multi head attention is an attention mechanism that is applied in parallel multiple times each with a different learned weight matrix this is known as multi head attention and it allows the model to attend to different parts of the input sequence at different positions and resolutions so this is going to this is called the multi head attention because it uh, allows the model to uh, go and read from different parts of the input text and uh, 
uh, identify the dependencies between them. So it is simultaneously it is going to read from means parallel is going to do the read and uh, uh, get the information from different parts of the text and building that uh, context information. Feed forward and networks are uh, in each attention supplier in the encoder and decoder is followed by a feed forward neural network layer as you see in the picture after every multi head attention you can also see a feed forward okay so here also you can see that this helps the model to capture non linear relationships in the data So where this transformation models are applicable, the transformation arch architecture has proven highly effective for wide range of sequence based tasks, including the machine translation, text summarization, and the language modeling. Like uh, whenever we ask the model to translate very lengthy text, so it's very, very important to understand that every language is not framing the sentences in the same way like if you speak english the words will be arranged from left to right but when you talk the same sentence in hindi or some other language it may be arranging the words from right to left means if you look into the order of english into hindi in English, which of the words coming at last, but in Hindi, it may be coming in the beginning. So that means different languages uh, formulate the sentences using different uh, ways. So it's very important to understand when you get a large text content, we have to identify the relationship between those text elements and uh, uh translating them into a different language so that because that uh, target language format or sequence may be different same in case of text summarization and also for language modeling so whenever you build the conversational ui that is also important additionally transformers have been adapted and extended for tasks beyond NLP, such as image processing and reinforcement learning. So we also use the transformers architecture uh, uh, for some other scenarios like image processing and reinforcement learning. Notable transformer based models include BERT, that is bidirectional encoder representational from transformers and GPT generative pre trained transformer, which is from open AI. Another model which we have seen is diffusion model. It is a class of generative AI models uh, that can create new data, often sun stunningly realistic images by learning to reverse and noisy. Uh, noise adding process. So what is it doing? It during the training, we will be providing some kind of uh, image and it is adding noise to that image like the smudges. It is going to add into this image and make this model or make this image unrecognizable. Later, it will do the reverse process, which means it will remove those smudges and try to uh, recreate those or recover those original image that means whatever image you are providing it will uh, try to convert that into an unrecognizable image by adding smudges and then try to recover uh, the original image by removing those smudges that means it will learn how to remove noises from images so that the benefit is if you provide a, a noisy image it will be able to go and remove those noises 
and restore the original picture. It works by de destroying the training data through the successive addition of Gaussian noise and then learning to recover the data by reversing this noise noising process. After training, we can use the diffusion model to generate data by simply passing randomly sampled noise through the learned denoising process. That means once the model is trained, then we can provide the noisy data and it will successfully return the original data by removing these noises. Imagine that you have a painting and gradually obscure with its more and more paint splatters. A diffusion model will learn to clean the painting, removing the splatters and revealing the original image bit by bit. This cleaning process then becomes the tool for generating the new images entirely starting from a random noise. So that means if you have a complete uh, distorted image, it will be able to go and recreate those images, the actual images based on the data that it has learned, like how to remove the noises from the images. So how the diffusion works? The noising process that is forward diffusion, the model start with the real data like images, it gradually add the noise to the data step by step, creating increasingly blurry versions. And this process called the forward diffusion process. Uh, this simulates how the real data might become corrupted or degraded over time. And learning to denoise, that is the reverse diffusion stage. Now the model learns to reverse the noise addition. It takes a noisy image means it's created the forwarded process or even a pure random noise image and predicts the cleaner version step by step means it is reversing that process and creating the original one this reverse diffusion process is the heart of the model's learning generating new data once trained the model can start with the pure noise and apply the learned denoising process in with each step the noise reduces and the new image emerges by controlling the randomness in the starting noise and denoising step the model can generate a variety of diverse and creative output so that means like you must have seen uh, we have now options in photoshop if you give uh, some blurry images or unrecognizable image, it is now able to go and generate the original image. For example, maybe at, at our home, we may have photographs of our uh, grandparents and that may be uh, degraded. So we can regenerate those images by removing those noises using this kind of models. So here you can see this is how it learns. We have the original data and gradually step by step it is adding noise and then it will uh, understand uh, that, the, that this is a unrecognizable image or unrecognizable data and then later it use the reverse process means denoising process and then recovering the original image. Applications of diffusion models. So primarily this uh, is used in image generations like uh, creating hyper realistic images or image editing and in painting and out painting like in painting means what this models can intelligently edit the images by removing the unwanted objects like we can tell uh, we can see a lot of mobile applications now available for removing the backgrounds or removing the objects from the pictures so that is an example of diffusion model out painting diffusion models can creatively extend the borders of image generating plausible 
continuous of the scene beyond the frame. So uh, maybe we have uh, only half of the half part of a particular person. Maybe the left hand is missing or right hand is missing in the photo. Using this AI model, we can also add the left hand and right hand. Suppose maybe because this image, because the left hand or right hand is out of the uh, image border. So it will be able to go and uh, create the hands for that particular image. Not only the images, we can use it for video generations, text to speech and speech to text processing, music generation and even anomaly detections. Now let's uh, see. We have uh, learned some of the deep learning models which can be used for building the generative models. And these generative models are we simply call as large language models. They are the deep learning models created either by using the GAN or transformer architecture or diffusion model or using the variational autoencoders. And these models use billions of parameters to reconstruct the data or generate the new data. The parameters means what it has learned. Like if we are saying how to draw an image of a cat. So it has learned what are the different parameters of the cat. So cat will have a tail, it will have eyes, the eye looks like, eye looks, uh, like what it, the, the hairstyle, all it learned. So all these informations it can use to build the new data. It is used to predict the text or uh, used to generate the text or used to generate the images and so on. And they use the pre-trained data for uh, generating the new data because they are understanding those parameters from those uh, trained data. So because they are trained with the millions or trillions of data and from those it is extracting those parameters. And if you see uh, GPT-4, which is one of the uh, most popular large language model and it uses 1.76 trillion parameters and you can imagine. When the number of parameters increases, the capability of the model also increases. For example, if you say 1 million parameters means it has less capability. It is able to generate the new data, but not very accurate, not very uh, clear. But if you see the number of parameters are higher, it means it is aware about each and every aspect of the object. Like it know each and every aspect of the language, each and every aspect of the objects like uh, dogs, cats, elephants, uh, birds, trees. It is also aware about the different uh, syntax and semantic uh, concepts in languages, like in uh, Arabic, how the sentences are formed, or in Hindi, how the sentences are formed. So it is aware about all the concept of uh, the data so that GPT-4 is one of the most popular large language model because and it, because it provides higher accuracy and creativity with a 1.76 trillion parameters. This is an approximate value they are saying. Original numbers can differ from this, but this is what uh, the, the documentations are saying.
so we have learned about the different uh, machine learning or deep learning models and the large language model now we need to look into the open ai which is one of the most popular generative ai technique or generative ai model set but before getting into this we will take a small break of 10 minutes and then we'll continue after the break so we will take a small break of 10 minutes you can go and have a cup of tea or coffee and then we'll start after that Hi guys, Chaitali this side. Uh, guys, as we are on break, please get your batch activated. Uh, the steps for the batch and the URL has been mentioned in the chat box. You all can go follow the steps and get your batch activated. Uh, you can share this batch and celebrate your achievement. You can share this batch on your LinkedIn, Twitter and prof other profiles as well. Uh, what this batch will do, it will, uh, you know, stand out. It will make you stand out more uh, rather than the other people who share this batch on the LinkedIn. So make sure you get this batch activated. You can share this batch on your LinkedIn and other profile as well. I will let you understand how to get this batch activated in a while. Uh, before that, uh, please make sure you get your batch activated. For that batch, you have to create a Microsoft Learn account. You just have to go on Microsoft Learn account. If you don't have an account created, please sign in and create an account. Once you create an account, you can go on the URL on a new tab. Click the URL which has been pasted in the chat box for the batch. Like this, you have to go on a Microsoft Learn, create an account. You have to sign in if you don't have an account. And then you will get a URL. In the chat box which has been mentioned. So go get your batch activated. After you click on the redeem button for the batch. The batch will look like this under the achievements in module and courses. Also, as I said, you can share this batch on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter profiles. You can see here under the achievement, I can see my batch. The batch will look like this. After you get this batch activated, you can print it out. I will show you how to get this batch printed and all. Just a second, let me share my other screen.
okay i hope you all can see my screen i have my account learn account i already created if you don't have you just have to go on a new tab right microsoft learn and you will get a first link you have to go on that link microsoft learn link and as well, as my account has been already created it is showing that uh, the account has been created i will go on my profile here is my profile so as soon as my profile has been created now i will go on new tab i will get this batch link copied and paste it over here and i will enter it okay so here you can see as soon as i enter the url in new tab i get a redeem option for that batch so i will click on redeem here you can see my batch has been activated i can view it on my profile now this is my profile now i can see the batch on my profile okay i have to refresh it under achievements i can see my batch now okay it will take a time little time to reflect but as you can see uh, uh, yes yes my batch is activated now here you can see under the course it is showing that i have activated my batch on the date 20th of december here you will see your batch also the modules and the learning path regarding the batch will will, will reflect under the learning path and modules it will take a little while to reflect on your profile but it will get reflected once you get the batch activated now as you can see my batch has been reflected i can see a share icon once i click on this icon i can share uh, my batch on linkedin facebook twitter and other profiles as well so i will go on linkedin i want to share this batch on my linkedin so i will click on linkedin okay so here you can see uh, i can share this achievement on my linkedin this is my linkedin profile and i can share it let me post it to show you all okay so once i have shared my achievement and i click on that link it will showcase somewhat like this that i have achieved the batch for develop generating ai solution with azure open ai solution here you can see the completion date of my batch on which i have completed my name is popping up so please get your batch activated you can post done activating yeah if you are facing any problem do let me know in the chat box if you complete the redemption do let me know that you have done with it please post done in the chat box if you complete the redemption i will uh, explain it, it, it to you all again like under the achievement in the course i will get the share button where i can go and share the 
achievement. I just have to click on this icon and I can share. Also, if I want to print or take a screenshot of the badge, I just have to click on the print icon. Once I click on the print icon, the badge will uh, show like this. Yeah, you can see my name has been mentioned. The completion date has been mentioned and the topic for which I have completed uh, the webinar or the workshop will be mentioned over here. So guys, please get your batch activated. It has module courses and learning path regarding this topic. If you are facing any problem, do let me know in the chat box. I am there to help you out. I hope everyone is able to get this batch activated. If you're facing any problem or issue while the redemption, do let me know in the chat box. Okay, some of the participants are asking how to get the uh, print of the badge. Okay, uh, guys, here you can see in my profile achievement has been mentioned. Under that achievement, I will go on my courses. Here are two icons which has been mentioned. One is for share. Once I click on share, I will get the options like uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. So I can share this batch on my LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter account. And the other icon is for print. So if I want the print for the batch, I will click on the print button and I can see the batch. Over here. So if you want to print or take a screenshot, you can go and get your print from here.
other than that the modules and the learning path will be mentioned beside it so for the batch which you have redeemed the modules and learning path will be mentioned in the uh, module and learning uh, path option so you have to click on that modules to get the modules for that batch and you have to click on the learning path to get the learn path for that batch My batch will reflect with the name as Develop Generative AI Solution with Azure Open AI Services. Also, the completion date will be mentioned under it. So, you'll get to know uh, on which date you have completed your webinar uh, or the uh, training. Okay, uh, one of the participant is asking how to print our name. Uh, so while printing it, you will get a ed edit your name option. So you just have to add your name in that and you can print it out. How to publish it in on LinkedIn uh, guys, you just have to click on the share icon. Uh, as you can see on the screen, the share icon has been mentioned over here. You just have to click on that share option and you will get a pop out like you can share on the profiles like LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter. So if I want to uh, go on my like I want to share my batch on my LinkedIn, I will click on the LinkedIn. And I can share my badge like this. Like you can, uh, you can uh, see here. Today I have earned my developed generative AI solutions with Azure Open AI Services badge. Here you can see the message has been mentioned. And once I post it, it will reflect on my uh, LinkedIn profile. So you have to go on that share button, click on the profile on uh, which whichever profile you want to share and the batch will reflect on your profile. Guys, please make sure you complete your badge redemption as we are waiting for you all. Once you complete the badge redemption, we can go ahead and start the webinar. Please get your badge activated so we can resume the webinar. If you are facing any doubt or if you have any query related to the badge redemption, do let me know in the chat box. Hello, Chaitali. Are you done with the? Uh, yes, sir. Just give me five more minutes. I will get uh, all the redemption done. Like people will like the participants will write done in the chat box so we can go ahead with the webinar. Guys, we are waiting for you all to get the batch activated. Please put a uh, yeah, uh, yes or done in the chat box so we can move ahead and resume the webinar.
Yes, guys, please put done or yes in the chat box if you have redeemed the batch. Uh, guys, those who need the badge for yesterday's webinar, which was on introduction to AI. So I will be pasting that badge link in the chat box too. But please make sure you put done in the chat box if you have completed the redemption so we can move ahead. Yes, so Lusa, you can resume now. OK, fine. Hello, guys, let's uh, continue. We are completed the initial part of this session. We have discussed about the various uh, deep learning model types, the methods in, and we have also discussed about the generative AI. Now we are discussing about the open AI, one of the popular generative AI technology. OpenAI is an American artificial intelligence research laboratory. So people, some people may have a thinking that it's a OpenAI is the machine learning model. So OpenAI is the uh, name of the artificial intelligence research laboratory, and they are uh, creating and releasing different uh, uh, generative AI models that can be used by the public and they are generating this uh, AI models for general public for the benefit of humanity. Open AI Incorporated is working on non-profit uh, services and Open AI Limited Partnership is a profit subsidiary of this Open AI. And open AI, you can use open AI models. You can use uh, in almost any uh, areas where we want to perform the text generations, nat natural language processing, image generations, or uh, audio processing, and so on. You can use this open AI models in your applications using the uh, REST APIs or the programming SDKs available for various applications or various languages. Means if you are a Python user, you can use the Python SDK, or if you are a .NET user, you can use the .NET SDK for building or integrating this OpenAI models inside your applications. This OpenAI models you can use to generate the text contents, generate and edit the images for 
converting speech to text and even you can use it for moderating the contents means if you are uh, uh, handling the large text data and whether it contains some harmful or sensitive information you 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 can moderate those text uh, using the open ai models some of the commonly used open ai models or generative ai model ai are gpt4 gpt3.5 embeddings dal e and whisper gpt4 is one of the uh, newest uh, uh, generative ai model from open ai and gpt stands for generative pre trained transformer and it is uh, a highly capable machine learning model or deep learning model that can also we can also call it as a multi model model because it can handle or it can accept uh, not only text but also some other types of uh, data as an input and generate the text outputs if you see the uh, if you are a open ai user means if you are uh, having an account in open ai you can use gpt4 only with subscription means you have to create subscription to use the gpt4 model but gpt3.5 which is the most commonly available uh, gpt model that can be used for natural language processing like uh, text generation summarization translation and so on and also it can be used for code generations means you can uh, uh, generate the program code for a particular scenario embeddings are typically used for creating the vectors numeric vectors corresponding to the text elements so we call it as embeddings that is primarily used in machine learning and other uh, scenarios where we want to identify the relationship between the text elements in a prompt and dali is primarily used as an image generation model we use it for drawing the images means for generating new images or we can use it to edit an existing image or we can also use it for creating variations of the images which means i have an existing image and i want to generate some uh, variations of that image means some differences in the image but the context of the image remains same but i want i can create different uh, variations of that image and whisper is a speech recognition model so we mostly we use it for the speech to text translations or uh, speech to text transcription and also you can do the uh, speech translation using this whisper model now if you see the gpt models generative pre trained transformer is the full form of gpt and it is one of the most commonly used uh, open ai model so if you uh, look uh, the the open ai is leasing different uh, models generative ai model but the most commonly used uh, uh, generative ai model is gpt and this gpt contains different uh, uh, ai models in that gpt family if you see the list of models in, includes gpt 3.5 turbo gpt 3.5 turbo 16k gpt 3.5 turbo instruct 
text embedding ADA and many other uh, GPT related uh, models available. And this GPT is primarily using the transformer architecture, which we have discussed earlier, uh, which is a neural network that can process sequential data such as text and speech and using the attention mechanism. So we have already discussed what is this attention mechanism and how it is processing the text. So GPT is using the transformer architecture. And GPT is a pre-trained large language model. So if you talk about the large language model types, it can be a pre-trained model or fine-tuned model or it can, it can be a multi-model type. Pre-trained means these models are pre-trained with the millions or trillions of data. And we can make queries to this models and it returns the responses. But fine-tuned models means they are also pre-trained models with a, a set of data. But yes, we can train those models with another set of data, our own custom data. So that you can fine tune the model to respond with uh, most recent informations or organization or domain specific informations. For example, if I want to uh, create a model that can talk about or that can understand the health care uh, industry uh, jargons and terminologies. So maybe uh, in, in, in the medical field, we are using lots of devices, medicines names, diseases names, which may not be understood by the traditional GPT models. But yes, we can fine tune the models with some extra informations available in the medi medical field or in the healthcare industry so that the model will start understanding about the disease names or medicine names or the, the device names that is used in the medical field. So that is what called the fine tuning. And multi-model type means they are able to handle different types of input data, not only the text data like GPT-4. You can say it's a multi-model type which is capable to uh, uh, understand not only the text data but also image and some other types. GPT is generative which means it can produce new and original content such as stories, poems, code, and uh, memes based on the given prompt and the context. So what is the input text we are providing? It's called the prompt. And based on the context, okay, what is the conversation history or what is the context we are making the request? Based on that, it can able to generate new content. GPT can be used for wide range of natural language processing tasks, such as question answering, text summarization, language translation, content generation, and so on. So for example, if I want to uh, convert a set of uh, text data into a different language, we can use the GPT models. So in organizations, they may have the policies, means rules and guidelines defined in English. But if it is an MNC, they need to uh, publish these rules and guidelines in different languages. Such cases, instead of rewriting these uh, rules and guidelines and policies uh, into di different languages, we can use a generative AI model which can 
translate this into different other languages we can also use the gpt models to generate the application code so now maybe if you are a developer you are uh, you must be already using some of the uh, code generation tools like uh, github copilot or aws code whisperer and so on so they are able to uh, generate the code based on the comments or the context if you see the evolution of the gpt models the gpt1 introduced uh, in 2018 and uh, in 2019 they have released the second version gpt3 is released in 2020 and 3.5 released in 2021 and 2021's model that is gpt 3.5 is uh, used now widely and gpt4 is also released with the latest uh, set of data and it is a multi-modal data uh, multi-modal model as i mentioned and uh, it is now currently available in the open ai with a subscription means you have to pay and use the gpt4 fine tuning is a capability offered by the gpt models which means some of the uh, gpt models in the gpt family can be fine tuned for specific task as i have mentioned you can uh, retrain the model with your own custom data and uh, uh, make it domain specific the key concepts of uh, gpt or open ai uh, is using an api key for authentication purpose so if you are a developer you need to make a request to the api endpoints means um, model endpoints to authenticate the request coming from the users you need to supply an authentication key in the request header if you have an open ai account whenever you register and create an account you will be provided with an api key and you can create more keys if you want and you can use those keys in the request header while making the request to the open ai model prompt is the input text that we are providing to the model for example if you are telling the model to create something that input text is called a prompt writing the prompt with a clear set of instructions is very important so that the model is able to understand it correctly and can provide the responses very accurately but if you are not providing the prompts in a correct format with a clear set of instructions or examples model may not be able to generate the responses correctly so a prompt engineering concept or prompt engineering is a, tech, a technique that we follow to write the correct prompts for the ai models so there are different uh, parameters or different uh, concepts you need to understand for writing the uh, correct prompts that's all comes under the prompt engineering because prompt engineering is actually an art of writing the correct prompt completion endpoint is uh, it means the response which is generated by the model suppose if it, if you are using a gpt model and you are making a request like a write a tagline for the ice cream shop 
So it returns a response which is called a completion. Like uh, we serve up files with a uh, every scoop. It's an example, right? So the input is called prompt and the response is called a completion. The token is an important concept in uh, open AI or in generative models because any prompt that you provide or the response which is generated that is called the completion is a text usually a text input which is divided into small tokens so token means it may be a small word or a group of characters like a hello or buy or ham a hamburger will be divided into uh, three tokens like ham bur and gur so like this so any text input you are providing it will be dividing those uh, text in the small tokens and the number of tokens which you are consuming is uh, very important because the cost is calculated based on the number of tokens and every model is providing a uh, token limit which means how many tokens it can handle in the request and response that is called the token limit like if you say a gpt 3.5 turbo is capable to handle 4k tokens that means 4098 tokens but if you go for uh, gpt 3.5 uh, turbo 16k which is capable for handling 16k tokens temperature is an important parameter that we use uh, you can set the value or range between 0 and 1 it is used to control the randomness in the response so if you set the temperature value to 0 which means it is more uh, uh, creating precise content. It's not going to generate uh, random contents uh, as a response. But if you set the value near to one, then it is more creative and generate the random contents. Okay, the context will be same, but formatting the contents in different ways. And it is very important to understand what are the different models supported by the uh, open ai so uh, each model has its own capability because some models may support some features which may not be available in the other model so you have to look into the documentation before start using these models and also to get the list of models you can refer the documentation or you can make a query to the open ai endpoint which will list the available models we can use the prompt to get the completions from different models available in the gpt and we can use these prompt for doing different things such as classifying the content generating the uh, new content transformation or translation summarization continuation question and answering and chat which means classifying the content means if you want to identify the feedback provided by a customer you must have seen in uh, some websites like uh, uh, flipkart uh, you can see whenever you go into the product details at the bottom you will see the feedback or or reviews there is an option to uh, filter positive reviews and negative reviews so how it is identifying that the customer feedback is a positive review or it's a negative review because it can use a machine learning model and whatever uh, response or whatever uh, feedback response the user is providing will be processed and it is identifying whether it is a positive or negative feedback you can also generate new contents using this gpt models 
use it like uh, poems and uh, uh, stories or articles, blogs, question and answers and so on. Transformation and translation. So you can easily convert the text from one format to another format or from one language to another language. Summarization is another feature. For example, if you have a very, very lengthy text and you want to extract the key sentences and summarize that in just five or ten sentences. So maybe you have a lengthy paragraph which contains maybe 10, 20 or 30 statements and you want to summarize this in just a five sentences. So you can use the summarization feature of the GPT. Continuation is another feature which can uh, uh, complete the statement that you are giving. For example, you can start with a story. Once upon a time, there was a king. And you can tell the model to continue and complete the story. So it will continue the story like once upon a time, there was a king who was very cruel to it, his uh, people like that. So continuation is also another example question answering that means you can ask the questions to the gpt models and it will be able to answer the uh, questions based on the train data so if it is trained with the latest data then it will be able to give the latest information chatting you can also create chat based applications like a chat bots with the gpt model so there is a chat completion endpoint available and it is uh, capable to uh, uh, create things like a chat uh, application in chat bot you can set the behavior of your chat bot using the system messages or you can send the prompt using the user role or you can uh, get the responses using the assistant role. So that means it's simply a chat conversation you can create with the GPT models. Primarily, there are three endpoints we use in GPT, like a completion, embeddings, and chat completion. Completion endpoint is uh, primarily used in older models, which is not used in latest models like a, a GPT 3.5 Turbo or 16K or GPT-4, they do not support the completion endpoint. So completion endpoint is typically accepting an input text. Simple in, input text is accepted and it generates some responses, means completions, which means whatever you are asking, it's just providing the response. That's it. So as a user you are supposed to provide only the input text and it returns the response but embeddings if you see it is used to return a vector of the string representation so it is going to return a float or number representation of the the text elements uh, in the prompt and it returns as a vector Chat completion, as I have mentioned, you are uh, conversing with a chatbot so that you need to provide the input prompt or input text in like a chat conversation history or chat conversation format. So I can show you a demo on this. Like uh, here I have the open AI account. See here, I have logged into my OpenAI account, and here is my API key. As you can see, this is the API key I have. You can create new API keys if you want, and this key 
is used for authenticating the request. So if you want to start using the open AI models, you have to use this key. And here you can see the this is the playground which I don't want to use directly here. OK, so I have this key with me and I want to use that inside my application. So here I, I'm, no, I'm not going to use any programming language uh, application like uh, Python or uh, Java or .NET. I'm going to use means I'm not going to use any SDK. I'm just using the REST APIs so that you will be able to understand how uh, we can make a request to the open AI models REST endpoints. But if you are interested, you can also use the SDK for making the request. After this demo, I'll show the uh, Python SDK uh, for invoking the same uh, request or same demos. As you can see here, I have uh, the uh, uh, Python environment created. I have created a virtual environment and installed the required packages. And since I'm planning to use the uh, REST APIs for invoking these OpenAI services, I have to install the pip package that is request. This is used for making the HTTP request. So I have installed this particular package. Let me set to the environment first. It's now installing the Python notebooks dependencies. Okay, it's now installing the package. Request package is installed here, as you can see. And this is my open AI's key. I'm declaring this as a constant variable because I want to use this in multiple examples. So I'm just declaring this into a variable or a constant. So you can see I have set this API key. And the first thing what I'm planning to do is uh, listing all the available models in OpenAI. As I have mentioned, OpenAI provides different set of uh, generative AI models and GPT itself, GPT family itself is providing different uh, models. So here you can see this URL that is api.openai.com slash v1 slash models this api endpoint is used for listing all the available models and you can make a get request for that and while making the request i need to send the header inside the header i can include the open ai key for authentication so you can see authorization header i'm passing it as a bearer token so bearer and then i can specify the key which is created here so this key i'm passing as a header and along with another header called the content type saying that it's a json content and here is the request i'm making a request request dot get and making a request to this url and also passing the headers i'll get the response here into the response variable and we are converting that into json object 
and from that json data we are extracting the data field so because the data field contains the list of models available so we will get the list of models into the data variable and i am printing these models one by one using a loop as you can see four model in data which means data contains the list of models available and i am printing those models names here model id is used for getting the name of the model so let me run this you can see here what are the different models we have text search babbage doc 001 query search query text davinci 003 uh, text search babbage query 001 babbage babbage search query gpt 3.5 turbo 0613 text babbage 001 and so on you can see lots of and it's a long list so if you want you can make it scrollable content and you can see this is the complete list of models which is available here okay so here you can even see the gpt 3.5 turbo uh, 1106 gpt 3.5 turbo 16k so all these models are now available in uh, what to say uh, open ai so you can go and uh, use any of this model in your application below i'm using this gpt 3.5 turbo instruct model as you see here the, it may be there somewhere okay, this is one of the model So here I am using the GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct for making a request to the completions endpoint. As you can see uh, in the slide I have shown you, there are uh, different endpoints provided like a completions embeddings and a chat completion. So this is the completions endpoint and you can see I can make a request just like a simple text. See, this is an example prompt. Create a catchy title for the advertisement of shoe product. So that is shoe is my product and I want to write an advertise, advertisement title for this. So this is my requirement. So it needs to go and generate a title. This is the model I'm going to make a request because I cannot use the new models because new models are not supporting the completion API because it's a legacy API or legacy endpoint. Max tokens that I can use, that is you can control how many tokens I can use inside my response or in the completion. So if you give large number of tokens, I mean 100, then it will be creating very large response. Or if you give only less number of tokens like a five or uh, six then it will be creating very small response so what is the number of tokens you use depends on that it can increase or decrease the length of the output content so i have prompt the model and the max tokens and here is the headers where i'm passing the api key and this is the request body. So in the request body, I'm saying prompt equal to the prompt value, model equal to model value, max tokens equal to max tokens value. So I'm sending this as my request. And here you can see I'm making a post request, request dot post. Then what is the URL? URL is this one, completions endpoint, and headers equal to headers. 
data equal to json dot dumps of data so this is my object which i want to send as json data so i have to use json dot dumps of data once i make a request i'll get the response here from the response i want to display the title so here what i'm doing i'm just printing the complete response data as you can see response dot json means it returns the response in the format of json and since i have to format this uh, with the indentation i am using the json dot dumps with indentation size as 4 let's see how it works you can see this is the json response or completion i have received and inside this choices you will see the result this is the first choice i got step into style the ultimate shoe collection where comfort meets fashion so this is the title of the advertisement as you can see step into style the ultimate shoe collection where comfort meets fashion right so usage so how much how many tokens used 12 tokens uh, used in the prompt completion tokens is 17 that is total tokens used is 29 so request contains 12 response contains 17 tokens right so this is the response format we get and from this i have to extract or i can go and extract this text but here you can see the chat completions endpoint so what is this chat completion it is primarily used in the new models like a gpt 3.5 turbo or later versions where we use a chat type of conversation with the assistant as you can see the request endpoint is different api.openai.com slash v1 slash chat slash completion so this is also completion but this is chat completion but here if you see this is just a v1 slash completions and this is v1 slash chat slash completion so that means it's a chat completion endpoint and we can set the headers values like authentic authorization token as well as the content type and in, in in the request body that is the data we are setting the model which model we are supposed to use so i'm making a request to the new model because chat completions are primarily used in the new models so i'm using gpt 3.5 turbo as the model and then <coughs> messages is an important parameter inside the messages you will see one or more message objects as you can see this is one message object where each message contains a role and the content a role means what is the uh, name of the participant or who is going to be uh, involved in that so here role equal to system means we are using it to set the behavior of the assistant as you can see role equal to system and that is typically used in the beginning the first as the first message we always set to the system message so what is a system message you are a helpful assistant to generate the python code for developers so this is primarily used to set the behavior of the assistant so when you talk to the model the model will understand okay i am a code generator model so that i have to respond everything in the python code format but if you are not mentioning anything you are a, you are just a helpful assistant it is just understand okay i am a generic model anything which is asked i will just respond sometimes in the text format sometimes in the code format some, sometimes in a different format okay so here i am clearly setting the behavior of the assistant that it is a code generation assistant because it is helping 
the developers to generate the Python code. And you can see here is the next message in the array. You can see this is the conversation, right? So role equal to user means what the user is asking. Content is equal to how to check a string is palindrome or not. So I have not mentioned that whether it is a program code I need, I'm expecting or a description uh, I'm expecting, right? Because I have just mentioned how to check a string is palindrome or not. So it is possible that it can ex explain the way how to check the palindrome or it can return the Python code. But you can see here I have already mentioned the behavior of the model so that the assistant that is the model is say understanding that it has to generate the Python code for the same. So now you can see this is the uh, data which contains the model and messages inside the messages we can specify the list of messages we want. And when I make a request it is going to respond for this prompt. See, I'm making a request to that URL. This is the data I'm passing to the URL and it returns the response. From that response, I want to print the choice of zero of message of content. That means I want to print only that response content. I don't want to print the complete JSON because if I print the complete JSON, it will looks like this. I don't want to print the complete JSON from the choices only the message content I want. So this is for the completion response. So it is just a choice of text, but this is the chat completion. So the response will contain choice array and inside that messages will be there inside the message. There is a content parameter. So I want the content parameter which will be which will be the completion, which means the response. So I want to print the response below using a print function. So let's see what will be the response. See here you can see it's generating a Python code. Here is an example code to check if the string is valid wrong. And here is the Python. This is a response is coming in the markdown format, right? You can see this is the Python code which is used for checking whether a string is palindrome or not. This is the function and this is how we can make a call to that Python function, right? So that is what the chat completion or you can change the behavior of this uh, uh, assistant and ask some prompt and along with the prompt, you can include some examples also in the prompt. It's part of the prompt engineering, which we are not discussing here. So how the prompts needs to be uh, formatted or created, that is part of the prompt engineering, which we are not discussing here. So here you can see the chat completion endpoint is capable to return the response. And what I have asked is how to check a palindrome or how to check a string is palindrome or not. So instead of giving the string response like a string description, it is generating the Python code. So why it is doing so? Because I have clearly mentioned that it is the model or assistant is, is an assistant who help the developers to generate the code. Similarly, we also have the embeddings endpoint. So there is a text embeddings model which is used to take a text as an input and returns a vector of numbers that represents the relationship between the text, uh, between the elements or uh, words in the text. As you can see here, for Calling the embeddings endpoint, we have to make a call to the embeddings endpoint. Here is the URL, and we are same like others. We are supposed to pass the open API key. Sorry, open AI key. That is the uh, authentication key. And here is the data means the request 
body where you can specify the input so input equal to what is the text input we are providing so the food was delicious and the waiter was so helpful so this is the text that we are providing and which model is used for invoking this uh, embeddings endpoint that is text embeddings ada002 and encoding format is float now here you can see i am making a post request to the url with this data and we'll get the response and from the response i don't want to print the complete response i want to print only the embeddings value so from the response there is a data section it will be an array type from that the embeddings parameter value i am printing so embeddings means it will be an array of numerical values let's try this i'm making a request and you can see it returns a vector that contains the numerical values right so these are the different endpoints we can use in the gpt model as, as you can see the completions chat completions and embeddings which we have discussed and very importantly the uh, completion and embeddings models are used in the older models only so for the new models you have to use the chat completion here is the example for the one which we have seen so you can see we makes a request to this url and here is the chat completions endpoint we makes a request to this url and you can see the request body looks like this so you can see here it is a conversation type of uh, request body here we are using the gpt model gpt 3.5 turbo and the messages we are saying a role equal to system which means we are setting the system mes message you are an assistant that teaches people about the ui so we are setting the behavior of the ai model that you are an ai assistant or model who teaches about the ai and the examples we can set role equal to user and the user is asking does azure open ai support multiple languages then assistant is responding yes azure open ai supports several languages so this is an example of a conversation so why we are including this example because the model will understand okay this is the format or this is the way i have to respond so if i am showing an example you can follow that example right or you can follow that format so we are giving this conversation as an example so this is given as an example so that the model is able to understand that if the user is asking something like this it has to respond like this so here you can see the role assistant is giving a completion or respond so this is just an example that the user is providing but the actual prompt is this one so here you can see again role equal to user and content equal to the actual prompt you are asking what is that do other cognitive services support translation so this is the actual prompt and it is expecting a response like this yes or no with a description as you can see in the response we can see the choice which is an array type inside that we have the message object inside the message we have the content it says yes the other cognitive services also supports translation so you can see it is exactly in the same format we have mentioned right so that is what chat completions endpoint in the embeddings you can see we provide an input text it returns a vector of numerical values as you can see here we are providing the input text 
and we will get the response as an embeddings array. Right, so here we will get each value as a numerical content. Now coming to the image generation model that is DAL E. DAL E is actually an image generation model which is used to generate the images or edit the images or create the variations of the image. You can use this primarily use, uh, you can use it primarily for generating the new images. You can give a description of the image and it is able to create the image for you. This is taking a text input analyze the text input, understand the context, and then draw the image. You will be able to control the image size, then the images style and other parameters in the prompt as well as in the request body. You can see here an example a highland cow in the field on the coast of Scotland, digital art style. So what type of art it is requiring? So digital art style. So it returns the response uh, in the style, right side you can see. So this feature is now available in the Microsoft Bing also. Like if you go to Bing, you can say draw an image of uh, sea with cloudy sky and the ship moons moon and uh, birds in the sky and you can also spay, uh, say cinematic lighting let's see whether it is drawing this and you can see it's generating an image and it is using the Bing. This is actually Bing only. The Bing is internally using the DAL E for drawing the image. As you can see here, powered by DAL E3. Right, so you can see four variations of this image is coming. You can see this is the image. It's a cinematic image, right? As you can see, moon, birds, cloudy sky, ship, and the sea. If you see, this is another image. Uh, this is a variation. That means same contents there, but you can see this is a different uh, image. This is a different one. And this is a different one. So you can see four variations it's created, right? So that is what DAL E is doing. So the same thing you can you may able to go and create like here what we had digital art style let's try that one so you can instead of cinematic lighting you can say digital art style let's see whether it is able to create
so this is a digital art one something similar to cinematic only but yes or you can also try this as a cartoon style or something like that Yes, you can see. This time the image is different. Right. So that means using the prompt, you can control the output or the, the response, right? So in the request, what you are specifying, this is more cinematic lighting. This is digital art and this is more cartoon type. right? And you can also see this is also doing the moderation, content moderation. So you can say, draw an image of lion and uh, rabbit. Lion uh, kills or attacks a rabbit in the forest. You can see this is not generating the uh, image. It's not because it uh, it cannot create the image. It is because it contains some violence. Okay, so that means uh, it is moderating this uh, prompt and checking whether it contains any uh, violence, self uh, what self attack. Uh, sexual or hate kind of contents. So if it contains any of these uh, type of information, then it is simply uh, uh, ignore that. OK, that means here instead of drawing the image, it is just a created text content. So if you are uh, trying to draw an image which is uh, self harm or hate or sexual or violence, then it will not draw such kind of images because this is does the moderation also. So as a developer, how you can go and draw the images? You can see here in open AI, we can use the images flash generations endpoint to draw the image. You can see here, we can make a request like this, model equal to dal E3, prompt equal to a cute baby sea otter, n is the number of images and size is the size of the image you want. Once the image is drawn, it will return the URL of that particular image. So you can see the response comes like this, the result, the result contains a data array, and it will contain a URL in an object. Okay, so you can see or you can try this in our uh, Python application also or for using Python code also. If I go to here, you can see we can generate an image using the DAL E generations endpoint. You can see here is the URL which is used to generate an image and same like the previous examples so we are supposed to pass the <coughs> authorization key and in the request you can specify request body contains the model name that is dal e3 and the prompt is a beautiful garden 
with different colors of birds and butterflies cinematic lighting or you can give a different uh, uh, prompt for that and here i'm saying the number of images one size you can see specify the size value i'm saying is uh, 1792 into 1024 okay. so here in the uh, data parameter you are supposed to pass the uh, data that is this one so here you can see i'm making a request post request to this url with this data and here we'll get the response and the response i'm printing so we'll see the response but the response contains a url but how i can see the image either i can click on the url and see the image or i can draw the image into the python notebook itself so here you can see i'm using this package to import the image and display method then i i'm creating the image url the image url is the response.json of data of zero of url and i'm just printing the url here in the screen and also drawing that image here Let's see whether I'm able to generate this in image or not. Oh, rate limit exceeded. Uh, rate limit exceeded for minutes in the organization. But I have not. Maybe I have used uh, from this account. The rate limit applied. Okay, since it is a free account, there is a limit one image per minute. Okay, let's wait some time and retry. It's not. Okay, so it's maybe because I have this rate limit because it's a free account I'm using. So it's still giving the same. Let's try with this model. Invalid size. Size parameter not supported. Okay, you can see here it uh, created this image. See, this is the image which is generated, but yes, this is not the image which we are expecting. It's not that uh, great. It looks like a normal photograph. Okay. 
but cinematic lighting which i am expecting means it's a different style but if you are using dal e3 then it uh, it should generate more uh, cinematic image as you can cinematic lighting image but unfortunately this rate limit exceed is coming okay anyway so so this is how we are invoking the dal e so i have tried with the dal e2 and it's working but dal e3 is limitation uh, rate limit uh, applied so i'm not able to invoke it speech recognition with whisper so whisper is an automatic speech recognition system trained on 680000 hours of multilingual and multitask supervised data collected from the web so you can see it's trained with a large set of data trained with a large amount of data for hours with the different languages and different voices and this whisper is capable to transcribe the audio in multiple languages as well as translate the speech from those languages into english so that means it is capable to uh, transcribe the audio so if you have an audio you can transcribe this audio as well as it can translate the speech from one language to another language or you can even do a uh, text to speech means the, if you have a given text that can be converted into uh, audio okay the whisper is based on a simple end to end approach implemented as an encoder decoder transformer and whisper is an open source also available through the open ai api so we can invoke this uh, 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 open ai's audio api uh, using the endpoint as you can see this this is an example uh, the api.openai.com/v1/audio/speech which means we have to uh, convert the text input into a into an audio uh, file or audio stream so what the request returns is means when i make a request it is going to return an audio file so i can show you that example here i can see there is all, already one file exist let me rename this or maybe can say this is old now if i go to here here is an example for text to speech okay for that i can use this url so this api.openai.com/v1/audio/speech is the url and i can make a request for that we have to set the headers and in the request body we have to specify the model to be used we can say tts1 and you can specify the input text and this text is going to be converted into audio and you can specify the voice the voice types means there are different uh, voice types you can specify uh alloy or onyx and so so many things are there you can check the documentation for the available voice types so male female and uh, uh, different types of voices available you can select any one of this so i have mentioned this and i can make a request here you can see i am making a request to this particular url and it is going to return the response and the response what is coming is a audio stream content and that audio stream content i want to write into a file called the speech.mp3 
you can see I'm opening a file in the right binary mode and writing this response content into that file. See, uh, let's see how it works. So I'm, I have just renamed this existing one into a different name and let's try to make a call to this. Yes, you can see here the speech.mp3 is uh, generated and. Yeah, so when I run this or when I play this, it's going to. Uh, speak the same text what I have given here. Right. So this is. Uh, and if I want to play here, I can simply use it here. Oh, it's not. Playing here, so some problem with this code. Let it be anyway. So we have generated the. Uh, uh, speech file here, which means the text is now converted into audio file. Similarly, we can also. We can also transcribe the audio into the given uh, language or into a specific language which is provided. For that, you can make a request to the api.openai.com slash v1 slash audio slash transcriptions endpoint. So this is the endpoint and here you have to make a request and in the request you have to upload the file to the endpoint and it is going to return the. Uh, transcribed text. Here you can see we are specifying the model as a whisper and the file you have to specify. It is also possible to translate the uh, audio into English. As you can see here, you will be invoking the audio slash translations endpoint and where you need to specify the file path. As you can see, file equal to the path to the file and you can specify the file path and the uh, model you can say whisper one and that is going to return the translated text so here it is a german file and it's going to be converted into english and then returns that translated text So these are some of the uh, open AI models we have and we have seen some of the practical uh, examples how we can use or how we can invoke them. Uh, it's also possible to invoke them through the SDK, but I am not showing that maybe some of you are from Python background or some of you are from C sharp or Java background. So it depends on what language or framework you are using. You are allowed it to go and download the open AI package or library and invoke these methods. So that I have shown the rest example, which is general for all. Uh, programmers, so how to use the rest APIs uh, in Python only I have invoked, but that is the rest API method you can invoke. Now let's see how we can or what are the different uh, use cases or applications of Gen AI where it is already used. Some of the things we can see. You can see the code generators like GitHub Copilot and AWS Code Whisperer are using the Gen AI functionalities. Whether they are using GPT or some other Gen AI technology, it's not known to us. But yes, they are using the Gen AI concepts or Gen AI models to uh, generate the code in your IDE. Means if you are using Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, or JetBrains, or some other IDE, 
you can auto generate the code using the code generators one of the popular uh, code generator is github copilot you can also use the aws code whisperer which is completely free so you just need to register into aws builder account that's it means it, you don't need an aws account but you can just uh, uh, register into aws builder account and github copilot you need to have an uh, github uh, subscription means uh, paid subscription for github copilot even trial option is available for example the code generator uh, i can create a folder here and maybe give the name as sample open the visual studio code i have used the aws code whisperer for that as you can see it is activating the extension and i have this code whisperer so what's the benefit of using that is suppose if i am creating a python file i can specify what i am expecting to create create a function to test a string is not so here i can go and generate the string so here you can see i don't need to go and write the function so when i press the tab it's auto generate the complete things right so you can see this function is automatically created so, or you can also go and do something maybe i can say write a python code to connect with my sql database let's see whether it will do or not you can see here is the code and the, what is this function is doing it is uh accepting some parameters like host name username password and database name and then using the mysql connector to connect with this you can see it is returning the connection object so now the developers need not to write the complete code they are just need to specify the instructions like this so this is possible with other languages also like maybe uh, uh, javascript also write a function to sort a list of numbers and you can see it's going to generate the complete function for me right and you can also see it's generating the it's capable to generate the test cases right so that means it is also uh, uh, writing the test cases if you want and also generate the complete application code for you right so that means these are the code generators what it will do uh, depends on the programming language the availability may change so here you can see javascript you can easily generate the code python code you can generate maybe c c++ or even c sharp is also possible so it depends on the uh, code generator tool that you are using the uh, facilities and functionalities may differ but here you can see this is what a code generator is doing microsoft copilot so if you 
look if you are a windows user here we we have a copilot right so this copilot is now part of the windows operating system and it is internally using the gpt models because it's using the bing chat only and you can start uh, a session so you can simply ask anything like uh, during the uh, uh, usage of windows means when when you are using windows if you want to uh, know about the windows or some of the windows configurations you can simply uh, ask the copilot instead of going to the google and searching so maybe you can say how to update windows operating system So it's actually the Bing search is doing and you can see the response which is coming. So instead of going to the uh, <clears throat> uh, Google and doing the search there, you can do it here inside the windows. Now Copilot is available as a tool. It's still in preview, but yes, behind the scene, it is using the generative model. Bing search and the image generation, which I have already demonstrated, like how the Bing is uh, generating the models. You hope you remember that we have created some images uh, with a, a cinematic lightning cartoon uh, style and so on. Google search. Google search is now using the Google's generative AI. Uh, that is BARD. In, the BARD is internally using the Gemini model. But yes, Google BARD is providing search results or whenever we do a search in Google, it is using the BARD to provide the responses. As you can see, usually when we do a searching in Google, it's like a how to yeah here you can see it generating the response using the generative ai as you can see this is like we don't need to go to any specific page and then look into the uh, content so previously the google was just giving the uh, list of hyperlinks or list of web pages so you have to go inside the web page and read the complete steps to understand uh, or to get the response but here now the whenever you do the search it is it is using the generative ai to generate the results here itself. So you don't need to go to any website and uh, read the things step by step. Here itself, it is available, right? So this is also an implementation of generative AI. So you may be using this, but maybe some people may, may not have noticed this, but yes, we are using this knowingly or unknowingly. And you can also see the Adobe uh, Photoshop is also using the AI to generate the images and modify the images. If you go to their uh, website itself, they are giving some examples like uh, Adobe Photoshop. If you go to this, yeah, here you can see how to edit the image and generate you can see it's easily creating or editing the images right and uh, here are some here you can see in this image we can put a lighthouse so simply like this you can select the area and 
specify the lighthouse and it's possible and multiple variations available here whatever style you want you can select from the variations so this is all because of the ai these are all generative ai's applications right right so applications and services already start using the generative ai's in it to enhance the customer experience so glean ai customer success bot it's a chatbot that uh, can be used uh, to engage with the customers and that you can train with your own custom data and this is a particular product that uses generative ai in 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 the chatbot so it's a chatbot application uh, for customer success and uh, it uses or it is powered by generative ai now coming into the final part of our session that is ethical ai development so we have learned a lot of things about ai and generative ai specifically but yes if you are start building the ai applications some points you have to keep in mind so how to build applications uh, which is uh, useful beneficial for the uh, customers or users and how we can make this responsible or how to use responsible ai in our applications what are the different uh, 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 rules and or permit pr principles we have to follow uh, for creating the responsible ai applications some of the responsible ai uh, principles what microsoft is saying one is fairness when you create ai based application you have to uh, make sure that there is no bias because of uh, uh, gender or ethnicity or religion or location or anything like that because sometimes the bias can affect the results so for example a person is uh, uh, what to say applying for a loan so because he is coming from a specific country specific religion or specific gender so it may not be acceptable so that should not happen so bias because of the gender ethnicity location region religion and those things should be avoided that's called a fairness reliability and safety so how we can make the ai application reliable because now there are lots of applications services devices running with ai how we can say that they are reliable and safe for example the driverless cars now available in many countries how we can uh, uh, say that it is reliable because if there is a failure in the ai system it will affect the passengers very badly because there may be a collision happens and that may uh, uh, kill the passenger right so that means whenever you makes an ai application you have to test it with a different conditions and make sure that it is reliable and safe privacy and security means when you use the ai applications you have to make sure that there is no sensitive data is exposed because the data which we are using for training or for uh, experiment uh, the data may contain some sensitive informations like uh, email phone number pin number or credit card number and so on so these informations should not get exposed 
that is mean by privacy and security inclusiveness means when you build the applications maybe those applications may not be suitable for everyone or so maybe some type of people may not be able to use that it should not happen for example if you build an application that uh, and if there is no audio facility then how the visually impaired people will use it for example you must have seen in the google search whenever i search it is generating the ai result above there is a listen button means when you click on that listen if i am not able to read the screen it will speak for me so that means even if i have some visual problem or vision is problems that ai can speak it for me so a person who is able to read and a person who is not able to read can use that facility right so that is what inclusiveness everyone should be considered transparency means whenever we build the application the application will give some predictions or results but it should be transparent that on what basis it is giving this result for example now stock marketing applications there are lots of stock marketing application they will give suggestions saying that okay you can buy this stock or you can uh, sell this stock or you have to hold this share something like that so on what basis they are saying that you have to buy the share or sell the share or hold the share because they have analyzed the previous uh, years data and they have understood the trend if the price decreases you have to uh, sell it or sorry you have to hold this or if the price increases you have to sell this and so on so that on that basis it is giving the suggestions or recommendations right so that is what transparency the customer or user must be aware on what basis it is giving the recommendations or suggestions and accountability means if something goes wrong or if an ai application is giving some suggestion who is accountable for that maybe it sometimes it goes wrong and if something happened who is accountable for that okay because if i am building uh, an ai application which is used to detect the criminals using the camera so i can put i can put this camera in front of a shopping mall so if there is a criminal or a thief who enter this uh, the end door entrance door the camera automatically capture the face and tells the police that he is a thief or he is a criminal whatever it is right but what if the face of a normal person okay is looks so similar to a criminal and the camera is saying that okay he is a criminal or a thief who is responsible for that maybe he is an innocent person but the camera is saying that he is looks similar to a thief right so that is a a problem that we may face so who is accountable for that because ai is taking the decision then finally let's uh, understand what are the efforts that open ai makes to mitigate the risk in the ai areas the first one the preparedness challenge in october 2023 the open ai launched the preparedness challenge a large scale effort to assess and mitigate the potential dangers of advanced ai models so they have already start evaluating what are the challenges may cause and how we can rectify this the challenge involves researchers from various disciplines including the computer scientists uh ethicists and the policy makers collaborating to develop methods for identifying and 
controlling risk associated with powerful AI systems. This initiative demonstrates open AI's proactive approach to, ad, uh, to addressing the long term risk of the AI focusing on catastrophic scenarios like nuclear threats or autonomous replication. So uh, you must have seen the uh, uh, Bollywood movie robot in which a robot Chitti is replicating its own versions and making his own army and fighting against the Indian army or the, the police. So this is because the AI is uh, used in a wrong way because the the, the uh, robot is uh, super intelligent at it and it is generating his own clones and creating an army and fighting against the humans. These things should not happen. I think you must have seen the Hollywood movies like uh, uh, what say Terminators Genesis kind of things and so these are some imagination but these things may happen if the AI goes into artificial super intelligence area. So open AI safety research and development open AI activity conducts research on various aspects of uh, AI safety, including the alignment, interpretability and robustness. Their research focus on developing techniques to ensure that AI system remain aligned with human values and do not cause harm. Partnership with Microsoft and uh, you can see my uh, Microsoft is now partnered with OpenAI. OpenAI's partnership with Microsoft provides them with the resources and expertise to further uh, their research and development efforts in the AI safety. This collaboration leads to projects like uh, Microsoft Turning, a large scale AI research project focused on develop, developing safe and beneficial AI for real world applications. So Microsoft is one of the largest IT uh, solution provider. So OpenAI has uh, partnered with uh, Microsoft uh, and they have started building uh, things for making uh, safe and secure AI solutions. So that's uh, the end of this session. And now if you have any questions, you can post your questions in the Q&A session and I'm happy to answer those questions. So uh, guys, if you have any questions or doubts, please put it in the chat box. Uh, Sonu sir is here to answer it. If you have any doubt related to topics and the concepts which we have covered in the webinar, please make sure you submit it in the chat box. Sonu sir is there to answer it out.
uh, I repeat if you have any questions, queries and doubts related to the topic, you can just put your questions in the chat box. Uh, Sonu sir is there to quickly answer the questions. Also, those who have yet to get the batch activated, please get this batch activated as this batch contains the module study material related to the topic which has been covered in this webinar. Please get this batch activated. I have shared the batch steps as well as the URL for the batch in the chat box. If you have any doubt regarding the batch redemption, do let me know in the chat box. Guys, I repeat those who have any questions and queries, please put it in the chat box. Also, if you are facing any problem while the redemption of the batch, uh, do let me know in the chat box so I can help you out with the same. The steps for the batch has been mentioned in the chat box for you all. Once again, I will uh, repeat the steps for you all so you can go and get your batch activated if you are yet to do that. Uh, for the batch redemption, uh, you have to go on Microsoft Learn and create a profile if you don't have a profile created. If you have a profile created, it, it is good that you have a profile created. Simply then you have to click on the URL uh, or you can click or you can get the URL on a new tab. And you will get a pop up to redeem the uh, batch. After that, you can see the batch in your profile. It will reflect in your profile. Under achievements, the batch will reflect under the achievements. Also, the module, study material and course related to the batch will reflect under the achievement. So make sure you get this batch activated at, as it is important for your revision. On this topic. The batch will look like this. Also, you can share this batch on your LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter profile. It will mention with the completion date. The batch will reflect with the title and completion date. Also, you can print as I have. Earlier explained you can print uh, with the print the batch with your name and details. So it will look somewhat like this. If you are facing any problem, please let me know in the chat box.
uh, also guys before winding up please make sure you submit your feedback form i request each and every participant to make sure you submit the feedback form uh, the feedback form link has been mentioned in the chat window please make sure you submit your feedback form your feedbacks are crucial to us so make sure uh, you submit the feedback form your suggestions and views on the gen ai series will uh, will be taken as a consideration so make sure you submit the feedback form okay so one of the participant is asking the title for the batch uh, guys the batch uh, will reflect with the title as develop generative ai solution with azure open ai services also the uh, date will be mentioned under it as 20th december you have activated the batch today so it will reflect the uh, date as 20th december so please check under the achievement courses and module you will get the batch activated and if you can't see the batch please uh, refresh the page it will reflect in a while once you redeem the batch it will take a few seconds to get the batch activated and reflected on your profile uh guys if you, if if the redemption date is showing 90th of december then that batch was for yesterday uh if you have redeemed the batch today it will show the date as 20th december so make sure you click on the correct urls the url for ai050 has been mentioned in the chat box so get that batch activated uh guys uh, for the exam voucher discounts and for the training related uh, queries you i have shared the uh, whatsapp number as well as the email id in the chat box you all can go and post your queries questions and whatever the details you are required relate, uh, related to the training and the certification you can go and mail us on that my support team is there to help you out with the same Uh, 
Yes, guys, we are waiting for you all to submit the feedback form. Then we'll wind the wind up the session for today. Please submit the feedback form before dropping up. Also, we have third session. Uh, in this Gen AI series, which is on practical application of generative AI in business. So the timings will be uh, same and the registration link has been mentioned in the chat box for you all. So if you are yet to register for that webinar, please make sure you register. The timing will be same as it was today, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. If you are interested, you can join that webinar too. My team will share the details and the participation link with you all. Uh, those who have submitted the feedback form and have activated the badge, they can drop off. Thank you so much, guys. I repeat, uh, those who have submitted the feedback form, they can drop off. We'll meet you tomorrow at the same time in the third session of the Gen AI series. I hope by now everyone has submitted the feedback form. Guys, if you are yet to submit the feedback form, make sure you submit it.
also those who have uh, missed the yesterday's uh, webinar which was on introduction to ai uh, in that uh, webinar we have shared ai 900 and ai 102 batches the links has been mentioned in the chat box for that too so if you are interested uh, to get that uh, study material the batches has been mentioned in the chat box for that uh, too Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you so much, Sonu, sir, for such an insightful webinar on generative AI. I hope uh, each and every participant has found it interesting and educational. Uh, also, guys, uh, thank you so much for participation participation in this webinar. Uh, we will uh, we like to invite you for the third uh, session of this uh, series, which is on. Uh, which is on uh, practical application of generative AI in business. Uh, if you are yet to register, the uh, registration link has been mentioned in the chat box for you all. You can join that webinar tomorrow uh, at the same time. Till then, uh, have a have a great evening. Thank you so much.